Hey guys, Adam from Atlas Gunworks. I'm going to talk today a little bit about gun coatings. So we'll start with your old fashioned, most basic gun coating, which is bluing. This is my little Ruger LCP. This is, of course, plastic, but up here is the bluing. Um, super cheap. It's just a dipped chemical. It creates a chemical reaction on the metal surface. Um, works good for show guns or safe guns, but not guns you're going to carry per se. This is such a cheap gun, it's not probably that big a deal, and I keep oil on it so it, be, it hasn't really started to rust a couple of spots here and there. But when this gun's worn out, you know, $300 gun, you just trade it in or, you know, get another one, no big deal. Um, but this is a super inferior coating. This gun doesn't come out of the holster much and the corners are wearing. Um, if you watch guys who do a lot of competition and they have blue guns, they're all scratched up and the part where their finger comes on and off above the trigger, that's almost always white there because they've worn off the bluing. Um, so it's cheap and inferior and competition, no, no competition gun should really be blued. Um, it's just, it's the wrong process for the kind of guns that we're using, you know, use guns. And I wouldn't blue a carry gun either. Um, it's just too much work to put oil on it every other day. Next is what everybody is doing these days, and this is a gun we brought in, or uh, a used gun that we just tuned. This is going to go out and get a different coating on it, um, but this is paint. So they have Cerakote and Duracote and blah, 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 and everybody's got a cool paint that they're going to put a chemical in, a polymer, to make it so it doesn't wear off. And the fact of the matter is it's still paint. It's applied just like paint to your car. They spray it on, and it's not, it's not abrasion resistant, so as it gets you know, in and out of a holster, or laid up on a table, or in and out of your range bag, it's going to wear the paint off. It's not made to be touched, you know. You don't touch your car paint when you walk by your car every day because you're going to scratch it off or wear it off. Um, it adds material when you put it on, the paint does, so the guns have a little break-in period, and then that leaves paint chunks in the gun. So paint's just a bad idea. A lot of high-end builders these days are putting paint on the guns, and it's wrong. They just shouldn't do it. Um, so this is paint. Um, this gun I actually just dry fired for this the last couple weeks. Um, just messing around here in the shop, but that's worn that right off. I mean that was that was green a couple weeks ago. So if you buy a high end gun and it's painted, plan on it being a safe queen. It shouldn't be your carry gun. It shouldn't be your competition gun unless you want to oil it all the time and have it look like crap. So paint's bad. Next is the there's two more styles that are both acceptable from um, and they're completely different processes. This is a Glock but it, this has a very much like the they use a proprietary process but we do a process on our guns called PVD um, and it's a vapor deposit so what happens is, is you, you take a clean part you hang it in a machine and you heat the chemical up and it blows the chemical at 400 degrees or whatever through the through the chamber and the particles attach. Um, they call it particle uh, vapor deposit. Uh, and you get a nice even coating. It's usually matte unless you polish stuff. Um, it's super wear resistant and the way it embeds in the metal you get um, some wear resistance even on the edges so you start to see where it wears off but it doesn't rust because they, it's, they've got the way it embeds in the metal there's actually some down in the, the pores of the metal. A uh, whole bunch of color choices, a whole bunch of different hardnesses or whatever, but it's an awesome coating, works great, doesn't add a lot of material, so the, if you build a really tight gun and you put this on, it's not going uh, to change the dimensions of your sli uh, frame to slide fit. So we approve of that, um, we do it on our guns uh, if you want it, especially if you want certain colors, in fact we have a batch going out, and that green gun that you just saw is going out to get a PVD coating on it, I think that one's going to be all black. Uh, it works on stainless too, which is nice. Uh, probably the Cadillac of uh, gun coatings is plating. So this is an electroless nickel with Teflon done by Robar. They call theirs NP3. Other companies do it as well. And this is a process where you take a, a clean metal part, you dip them in the in the in a liquid and you come out and the, it's added material, it's added nickel in this case. Um, hard chrome's done the same way. I like electroless nickel with the Teflon. Um, I like the way it looks. I like the Teflon will make the gun run slicker as the gun wear, the longer you run the gun. So a gun, this is a brand new gun, but a gun with 10,000 rounds will even be slicker than this. 
um, because the Teflon's coming to the surface as the material wears on the frame rails. Um, it does add a whole bunch of material, um, so the guns can't go in super tight or you won't be able to get them back together. So we actually build guns that go out for this kind of stuff with a little bit extra tolerance in there, and then when they come back, they, they won't fit together typically, and we have to hand lap them back on. Um, and you get a nice, perfect, I mean, this, one, this gun does, has zero wiggle. This gun's as tight as they come. Um, on a side note, everybody worries about the frame to slide fit. What really matters is that barrel to slide fit. Barrel to the gun fits, what, what makes a gun accurate or not accurate. Um, so hard chrome um, works just as well as electroless nickel for wear. They're super wear resistant. Um, they're abrasion resistant. Um, they look good for a long time, and it takes forever to wear through these. These are probably the longest lasting coatings. Um, you know, a, a, you could probably get a use gun and do 20, you know, 20 years and uh, 150,000 rounds before it really needed to get redone again. Um, you won't get that kind of wear out of probably any of the other ones. The PVD stuff might go that long, but it won't look as good um, doing it. So there's your gun coatings. If you're buying a high-end gun, make sure that you, uh, you get one of the better coatings, PVD or some kind of plating. Um, make sure the guys know how to do it right. A lot of times you'll see the plate guns come back and they're so tight that they don't, they just don't work the way they should. That gun should just, put, you know, no resistance. Um, when you plate the slides um, and the frames, it adds material and then the corners get sharp again. We break all the corners before the guns go out. So a lot of times you'll have to break all those corners back when, uh, when the guns come back. And that's what makes them run super slow is when you break all the edges. Uh, if you have a gun... Um, and you've had all the work done to it. So if you, let's say you bought an STI edge um, and you want to lighten the slide or whatever, if you buy an edge brand new or something, do a blue one, and then you can do the slide cuts and do everything the way you want and then get a good finish on it. Uh, if you buy a hard chrome one, it's a little bit harder to do that. It's still possible, but a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder. So once you get a gun and you, you have the gun the way you want, or you've got an older gun and you want it to, to function better, if the gun's super tight, I would do PVD. If it's not, and you plate it, and you do, and you send it to somebody who knows what they're doing, it'll come back super tight. They can make them. They can actually put a little material back in there and, and tighten the guns up so that they run just right. Uh, if you send your gun to Robar, they'll do the whole thing for you A to Z. It's a little bit more expensive, but it works well. Um, so easy enough. Hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions, give us a call at the shop, Atlas Gunworks. Take care, guys.